we're going to look at some bonding scenarios um, and keep in mind the definition of bonding, which is joining two atoms in a stable arrangement. We're going to briefly talk about ionic bonding and then we'll go to covalent bonding, which um, is what we see in most organic molecules. So in ionic bonding, we have a transfer of electrons. So let's just see how we get an ionic bond for lithium chloride. We'll use that as our example. So let's write on one side lithium, the other side chlorine, and um, I'm not going to review how to do this, and it's not all that important for this class, but uh, if you remember how to do electron configurations, lithium will have the noble gas helium, 2s1. Chlorine's electron configuration is neon, 3s2, 3p5. So keep in mind that um, an atom really wants eight electrons in its outer shell, so it has a noble gas configuration. Well, if lithium can lose this one electron, it will have the helium configuration. If chlorine can gain one more electron in the p orbital, then it will have six plus two, eight electrons in that shell, moving it up to the next noble gas configuration. So that's what we're going to do is we'll lose one electron from chlorine or from lithium. We get lithium plus, which has the noble gas configuration of helium. If we add one electron to chlorine, we get Cl minus. three s two three p six but that is actually the argon configuration and this net process where lithium lost one electron chlorine gained one electron really that was a transfer of one electron from the lithium to the chlorine now that they both have noble gas configurations, they're both quite stable, and we get lithium chloride. Or you could write it as the ions, lithium plus, Cl minus, that's the ionic compound. So for ionic compounds, this tends to happen between atoms with different electronegativities. And that's what we have here. Lithium is um, all the way on the left side of the periodic table in group 1A. Chlorine's all the way on the right side of the periodic table in group 7A. Also, another easy way to spot ionic compounds is when you have a metal and a nonmetal. Now let's talk about our other type of bonding, which is covalent bonding. And covalent bonding is what we see in most organic molecules. So a covalent bond is the sharing of electrons between two nuclei. And unlike ionic bonds, covalent bonds occurs between elements of similar electronegativity and it's usually nonmetals involved. So we'll just abbreviate nonmetal as NM. Let's look at a couple of examples. Um, I'm going to give you some names. Names is something that we'll cover a little bit later on. But first, let's look at ethane. So ethane is a CH3 
bonded to CH3. So we have these two electrons between the carbons being shared by the carbons. This is called a nonpolar covalent bond. Why is that? Well, both carbons have the same electronegativity, so there's really no pool of electrons in either direction. It's a very even sharing of electrons. So there's no polarization in that bond. That's why it's called nonpolar. We can also look just a little further if we draw out uh, the CH bonds. So let's just do that in one, on one side. And now we do have two atoms of different electronegativity, the carbon and the hydrogen, but they're not much different. Uh, the electronegativity values between carbon and hydrogen are very, very similar. So even though there might be a little bit of polarization in this bond, for all practical purposes, we still consider CH bonds as nonpolar. And it's still a covalent bond because the electrons are being shared. But now if we add something with a little more electronegativity, so let's say we replace one of the carbons, an ethane, with a chlorine. This gives us a molecule known as chloromethane. And it looks like this. So now we have this more electronegative atom attached. And what that means is the electrons are being pulled toward that atom because the chlorine likes electrons more than the carbon. So it's pulling the electrons towards itself. And as it does that, it takes on more negative character because remember, Electrons are negatively charged, so if it's pulling more electrons toward itself, it gets a partial negative charge. And we denote partial charges by using this delta symbol. So I'll say delta minus. And then because electrons are kind of being sucked away from the carbon, it doesn't have as much negative character now it's getting some partial positive character. So we'll put a delta plus on the carbon. Because that bond is polarized in one direction, this is called a polar covalent bond. The arrow that I drew, that's called a dipole arrow. and that points to the more electronegative atom. One tip you can use to think about um, the relationship between this dipole arrow and the charges, you'll notice here at the end of the dipole arrow, this almost looks like a positive charge. Well, that lines up with the partial positive atom.